Welcome to the workshop and to episode two of my miniature Land Rover build. If you saw the first episode, you would have seen me build the chassis, the steering and the suspension system. If you haven't seen that episode, do go back and watch it. I will put a link in the description below. Now in this episode, I'm going to build the body. This is going to be made from plywood and it's going to be in the style of my series two Land Rover. I will as ever go into as much detail as I can. So I hope you enjoy the video. Thanks for watching. To build this body, I'm going to be using this 18 mm birch plywood. Now, this is certainly not the cheapest plywood you can buy. In fact, it's pretty much the most expensive, but it's also the best quality. And if you want to cut out curves and radius from the edge like this, which is exactly what I want to do, then it is ideal for that because it's hardwood and it's very densely packed. I'm also going to use this. This is the same birch plywood, but it's got this glossy waterproof coating on one side and a hard wearing waterproof coating on the other side. This is great for the high traffic high wear areas such as the seat back and the floor panel which is the first bit I'm going to make. This is my floor panel. The next thing I need to do is run a groove all the way along here for the bulkhead section to locate into. I also need to make a small cutout to allow the wiring loom to pass underneath the body and then up the bulkhead during the final assembly of the car. Next I want to build the bulkhead section which is the grey vertical area you can see in this image. Now I want this to include the angled return at the top near the windscreen. So I'm going to cut these two sections out of the plain birch plywood and I'm going to plane some angles onto the end so that I can then glue them together into one solid piece. There is the finished bulkhead panel. What I need to do now is get it attached to the baseboard. Basically, this is going to be the bulkhead, the sort of dashboard area. The steering wheel will be on this side, and on this side, there's going to be a little aluminium panel with some buttons and switches and controls. So I need to cut that hole out now while it's easy to do so. Next, I need to cut out the side panels. These are going to be the vertical sections running the full length of either side of the vehicle, which means this is probably a good time to talk to you about scale. When you build any kind of miniature, you have to first decide what scale is your miniature going to be. Is it going to be half scale, quarter scale, whatever it's going to be, you have to make a decision before you can cut anything out. Now, in my previous video, I mentioned that the wheelbase of the full-size car is 88 inches and the wheelbase of the miniature is 88 centimeters. Obviously, this makes life very, very easy because it gives us a scale of near enough two fifths with one centimeter being near enough two fifths of one inch. But it's even easier than that because it means that when I come to marking it out, I can simply measure the height of a part of the Land Rover. For example, the side panel is 26 and a half inches. I can then simply transfer that measurement onto the board at 26 and a half centimeters. And then I can repeat this process for every measurement, transferring measurements from the full size car down to the miniature. The side panels will of course include the curve that runs along the side and makes up the two wheel arches. So I'm going to measure it and scale it down onto the side panel to try and recreate the same pattern. Plug it in first, shall I? The next thing I want to do is reduce this surface here. This is 18 millimeters at the moment, and it's going to look too chunky on the finished car. It's going to look out of proportion. So I need to reduce this down to about six millimeters without compromising the strength of the board. The next job is to machine a groove into this surface of the side panel because all of the weight of the body and the driver are going to rest on the joint between this base panel and this side panel. So that joint needs to be as strong as possible.
The side panel also needs to include the curve running along the top of the door, the larger curve running along the top front edge of the wing, and of course a compound curve where the two meet. Now the only way to do this neatly is to cut all of those curves from one solid lump. So I'm going to cut out the top and front wing sections and then glue all of them together into one solid lump from which I can cut my curves. This is one of my side sections and as you can see I've now got the top of the wing, the front of the wing and this side return that comes back to the radiator panel. Now on the inside I have put this corner section in. This is to allow me to machine a larger radius onto the top front edge and these are simply to add some strength to the corner so that when I do cut the radius out I don't weaken the joint. <laughs> Pretty happy with this. As you can see, that's the curve on the top of my wing to match the one on the car. There's a few high points and low points, uh, but I'll deal with that in the final sand. The next thing I need to do is run a smaller radius all along this top edge, round the curve and down the front wing. Again, this is to match the radius on the real car. starting to look a little bit more like a Land Rover now. I will of course be putting headlights into this panel and a kind of radiator grill, but I didn't order them in time so they're not here, I'll do that later. In the meantime... finished off this section at the back. This is just a plain panel at the moment. It will of course have a spare wheel and some lights in it. I have added these top sections here running along the length. They just finish off the side. I've sanded it all down and I've had my hair cut. Next, the battery tray. The batteries are going to sit around about here underneath the seat. So I need an upright at the back of the base panel to form the front of the seat box. I also need an upright just here. This is going to form the front of the motor compartment, the rear of the battery compartment, and it's going to bolt onto the back of this battery tray to provide a vertical support for the rear of the body. This is what I've come up with. Basically, these two thin ends pick up the weight of the body at the sides. These cutouts go over the wheel arches and this rebate on the back sits on the back of the battery tray. The next thing I need is a seat cover to go here. Not only does this form the seat itself, but it's also the top of the battery tray. I need a 
similar cover on here. This will be like the seat base, except this will hinge up from the front to give access to the motor, the differential, and lots of electrical components. It will also provide a seating area for taller children and adults if they want to drive the car. This is going to go in something like that, and it is going to attach with this piano hinge. Next, I need to build the bonnet section. And as you can see, it's this sort of uh, trapezoid type shape with this curve, this even curve running over the top. Now, what this means is I cannot make it from the same 18 mil plywood that I've been using for everything else. It needs to be more like 25, but it also needs to be the same good quality plywood. And the only bit I have is this rather scabby looking example, which as you can see is not looking very good. It's got oil soaked into one side, but this is the best corner. It's the same story on the other side. It's a little bit better, but once again, this corner is the best bit. So I'm going to cut the bit I need out of this corner. I'm going to clean it up as best I can. Then I can worry about shaping it. <laughs> And that is basically all of the carpentry side of this done. The very last thing I need to do is fit the headlights, which have finally arrived. This is one of them. As you can see, they have this little lip on them and they mount from the inside. So I need to remove this radiator panel, route these in, do a little housing for the fixings to go into. Then I can glue and screw the panel back in and then I can start painting. I know I said that was the last thing I needed to do, but in fact, I do need to drill a couple of holes in the body before I paint it. I want to do this now because if I do it later, the inside edges of those holes will be untreated and they'll let moisture in. So I'm going to drill a hole in the bulkhead to allow the steering column to go through, another hole in the bulkhead to allow the throttle cables to go through, and I'm going to drill holes in the front wings and the rear panel to fit the brake lights and the indicators. And that really is it. That's everything I need to do. I've really, really enjoyed doing this. This has been such great fun and so satisfying. And this material is so nice to work with. This good quality birch plywood, it's expensive, but because it's made of hardwood and because it's so densely packed and laminated, you can really get the good shapes. And when you're doing something like this bonnet with all the curves in it, it's really nice to work with like a solid piece of timber. It means you can get better shapes and a better quality finish. I'm really pleased with it. I think it looks great but I'm still gonna cover it in paint. So I need to take the whole thing apart. I'm going to fill all the screw holes. I'm going to sand it down and then I'm going to put a primer on it.
Once I've finished putting on this primer, it's time to start putting on the top coat. Now, this car is going to be for my daughter, Isla, which means she gets to choose the color. So she and I need to go shopping. Okay, let's go. Here we go. This one. You like that one? Yeah, I like this one. What kind is that? These are all our different colours being mixed together. <laughs> go. Wow! Is that what you wanted? Now, the more eagle-eyed viewers among you may have noticed that I have not painted the bonnet section. This is because I think it looks really cool. I really love the way this has come out with these sort of grain lines of the laminate. It kind of looks like uh, contour lines on a landscape map or something. Anyway, I think it looks really cool, so I want to keep it like this. I want to keep it visible. So I'm going to fill some of these imperfections with uh, coloured wax, and then I'm going to put Danish oil on it, and it's going to look brilliant. <laughs> And there it is, a miniature mint green Land Rover. Obviously, there's still loads left to do, all of the wiring, all of the controls, more than enough to fill a third video. Now, for those of you who have been waiting patiently for this video to arrive, my apologies for taking so long. As well as this, I've been working on restoring this little Yamaha for the kids, and I've been working on the next bullet car video. I've ended up with three kind of half finished videos and this was the one that got finished first so this is the one you've seen today if you've enjoyed this do please let youtube know by giving me a thumbs up and subscribe if you'd like to see more so thanks very much for watching and i'll see you next time